New year, new video of installing everyone's favorite OS. Windows 7. All right, since it's 2025, you know what the most sensible thing in the world to do is? Hello. It's to install Windows Vista in 2025, which is exactly what we'll be doing in today's video. As you can see, I'm giving you a brief overview of what's inside the box. Well, the installation box, that is. There's like loads of different fancy brochures and stuff. This little booklet is basically just like a quick start guide, showcasing all the features and all the icons that are in Windows Vista. Pretty cool, I guess. But anyway, we're going to move on and put that away. Let's get started. Wow, do I need to be more careful? I nearly shattered the sound barrier closing that box. Anyway, this is like the little blurb which tells you like all the features on Windows Vista and how they compare against Windows XP and other Windows Vista editions. The laptop we'll be installing Windows Vista on is a Lenovo ThinkPad W530. The specifications of this system are an Intel Core i5-3320M CPU at 3.4GHz, an NVIDIA Quadro K2000M, 16GB of DDR3 RAM at 1600MHz and a 1920x1080 Full HD display, with an SSD of 512GB installed. Making this kumpupa very, very good! Oops, my part German slipped out there. Anyway, let's get on to installing Windows Vista in 2025. This is the part where I make you all stare at the slightly delaminated Windows Vista Service Pack 1 installation disc. Alright, time's up. Time to put the disc inside the disk drive, and now it is time to install Windows Vista on this system. Even though I already have Windows Vista on here, I'm going to install Windows Vista on it again. Because, why the hell not? So yeah, as you can see, it's mm, pretty slow. Installing Windows, any version is slow. It took a good 15 minutes to install totally. Wait, never mind, that's actually kind of fast for a Windows install. What am I on about? It was pretty quick actually. But anyway, here we are in the out of box experience. As you can see, it's a lot better than Windows 10 and Windows 11's, where you don't have to enter a Microsoft account and you don't have to immediately connect to the Wi-Fi upon reaching this stage of the installation. So much better, honestly. It even let you choose your wallpaper, like no other version of Windows let you do that. Only Windows Vista does that. Anyway, I'm going to select Use Recommender Settings because... And Windows Vista was also the only OS by Microsoft to say thank you. How polite. Oh wait, XP did as well, I think. Never mind. Ah, uh, that sound brings back so many memories from childhood, am I right? Anyway, here we are. The reason why Windows Vista is in potato quality right now is because there are no drivers installed, so we better get to doing that right now. So I can use my fancy fruit to get aero mouse with the fish inside. Sorry guys, I just had to flex that. Sorry, not sorry. Anyway, let's get to installing the drivers. But wait, you installed Windows Vista Service Pack 1. Way ahead of you guys, I'm about to install Windows Vista Service Pack 2, otherwise none of the drivers would install. Well, at least that's what I think would happen, because they're likely not compatible with Windows Vista Service Pack 1 and under. And also, words of advice, when installing Windows Vista, I recommend downloading a Service Pack 2 ISO. I had one, but I wanted to make it more authentic by using the disk, but honestly, that took so long. What I mean by that is that Service Pack 2, the standalone update, took like way longer to install than even the installation itself. Once it had installed, we were greeted with this really weird error message for some weird reason. I don't know why, but mm, I'm gonna delete it anyway. Hopefully it doesn't cause any problems in the future. So yeah, there we go. Windows Vista Service Pack 2 is now installed. Happy days. And to install the drivers, I'll be using a tool called Snappy Driver Installer, which is actually pretty good. I need my USB port drivers because I really, really want to use my fancy fruit to get error mouse. Yep, I had to flex that again because... I mean, yeah, this tool has been pretty good for me in the past because it finds all the drivers in your system and installs all the drivers. Seems like a pretty cool tool, right? Especially when so many PC manufacturers have taken down their drivers for many legacy systems. Luckily for this laptop, it hasn't happened to this one yet, but it's only a matter of time until that happens, because this system is nearly 13 years old. As you can see, all the drivers seem to have installed. So, time for us to boot into our Windows Vista installation that we installed earlier. Wait. Well, we're back to square one again because as you can see that didn't go particularly well, did it? I had to go into Startup Repair and see if it could fix the issue for once because Startup Repair is fairly unreliable. However, in this case, it actually had worked, which is an absolute miracle. 
Snappy Driver Installer either works really well or doesn't, so I just gave up on Snappy Driver Installer and just installed the drivers manually. And as you can see, the drivers have successfully installed, while well, manually installing them. Here we have Windows Aero so we can do the fancy Flip 3D, and now it's time to install the Wi-Fi drivers, because what is life without Wi-Fi? We humans need Wi-Fi like plants need sunlight, otherwise we would just stop existing. Anyways, for an up-to-date web browser on Windows Vista and Windows XP, and even Windows 2000, and let's not forget Windows 7, Win32 on MSFN has kindly created Supermium, which backports a later version of Chrome to these legacy operating systems, making Windows Vista and all the aforementioned legacy operating systems very usable actually, especially if all you do is browse the internet and watch YouTube videos. Speaking of which, this YouTube video on this laptop is able to play with only dropping a single frame at 1080p. Not too shabby. Anyways, it's time for us to benchmark the system. This is a fairly old version of Performance Test, which is Performance Test 9, which is the last version to support Windows Vista, otherwise I would use a later version. So this compares the system against PCs of 2019 standards, so the score would probably be a lot less by today's standards. As you can see in 2019, this would have been a perfectly usable system. It is 52nd percentile, which means it is pretty average, it's in that sweet spot. However, we are missing the X11, so it wasn't able to run certain tests. That's where Legacy Update comes into play, which is also another really good tool. It installs all the updates on Windows Vista by simply just installing an app, which makes it so easy. It's so much easier having to download all the updates manually. Honestly, Legacy Update is a fantastic tool, especially if you're using Windows XP, Vista 7 and 8.1. It literally just searches all the updates and installs them all for you. However, Internet Explorer being Internet Explorer decided not to work. I mean, when does Internet Explorer ever work? Anyway, time to fire up me through to get Aero Mouse, as now all the updates are installed, we're going to rerun the Passmark performance test and see if we get a better result, as it is now able to perform all the tests, including all of the ones that rely on DX11. However, it won't be able to take advantage of DX12 because, well, Windows Vista doesn't have DX12. Anyway, let's see if the score improves significantly. I mean, there is an improvement. A whopping 2%. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, 2%, that's mad. As you can tell, I've hooked it up to some fancy speakers with really fancy audio quality. Wait, why is Welcome Center so big? Like, what the flip is going on? Anyways, I thought it'd be good to do some gaming on this laptop, and the only way to really play Minecraft is to use third-party launchers. In this case, I'm using MultiMC because I think that is a lot better. Well, even on my main system I use MultiMC because the uh, official Microsoft launcher is just so buggy and fails all the time. Just like a lot of Microsoft products these days. It's, it's really a shame. But, yeah, anyway, let's create this new world and see how well it runs on this 13-year-old system. So yeah, Minecraft on Windows Vista on a Lenovo ThinkPad W530 in 2025. What can I say, except it actually is running pretty well. It's keeping up at 60fps pretty well, that's because VSync is turned on. So yeah, I mean, it's playable. This is on medium settings. So yeah, I'd say this hardware hasn't aged particularly bad, I would say. Auto jump. Go away. I don't like you. Anyways, if you guys are wondering what version of Minecraft this is, I'm using 1.16.5 because this is the last version to support Windows Vista, well, unofficially. Because later versions of Minecraft require versions of Java that don't run on Windows Vista. After disabling VSync, frame rates got pretty crazy. You know, maybe I should turn VSync back on because uh, it's overheating a little bit. Alright, that's enough of gaming. As you can see, modern versions of certain applications do not run under Windows Vista. And if anything, most modern applications don't support anything under Windows 10 version 20H2, which is absolutely insane. Rendering these installers completely worthless. However, there is still the option to use legacy software, which is actually still pretty good in my opinion. I use Camtasia Studio 8 for making my Windows animations, as you guys love to watch. Well, some of you do, some of you don't. But yeah, opinions are like mobile phones. Everybody has one, regardless if it's good or bad. But yeah, for those of you who wonder how I make these videos, this is how I do it. I um, make them in Camtasia Studio 8 by adding text overlays, images, and keyframes 
which Camtasia has an excellent feature where you can um, enable easing on keyframes, which is good for certain scenes, especially like when a character appears on screen. Anyways, here's the result of the small animation I made. This took me a good half an hour to make. Yes, even just a small scene like this takes a good half an hour. Crazy, right? Looking at it, you would just think it would be made within like 30 seconds. Anyways, at the end of the day, program support on Windows Vista, even with the extended kernel, is still incredibly limited, unfortunately. But yeah, anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video of installing Windows Vista in 2025 on this Lenovo ThinkPad W530 and I must say, Windows Vista ran really well on this laptop, it's incredibly snappy, responsive, everything Windows 11 isn't on my main system, despite being pretty decent in terms of hardware. But yeah, the reason my voice sounds kind of funny in this video is because, well, I'm a little congested, I've got a cold, because it's winter, it's that time of year unfortunately. But anyways, Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in another video like this.